archaeologists are always looking down. We can't help it. It's what we do. We look on the ground for, for items that we may find. And so it was just natural for me to be looking down and see the top of this boulder where these dinosaur tracks were located. And because I'm an archaeologist, I'm not a specialist in dinosaurs or paleontology. So it was a very important for me to confirm uh, what I thought I saw with uh, an expert. And the perfect expert was UNLV paleontologist Dr. Steve Rowland, who deals every day in eons of time, but was certainly in a hurry to confirm Nathan's curiosity. He recognized what they probably were and asked me to come have a look at them, and, and uh, sure enough, they're spectacular examples of dinosaur tracks from the, the Aztec sandstone, which is the local Jurassic sandstone in Red Rock Canyon and elsewhere. The unique thing is that they're what we call natural cast. All the other tracks that we found in Red Rock Canyon, Valley of Fire, and elsewhere in Southern Nevada have been impressions in the rock. The ones here at the Springs Preserve are actually what we call natural casts, where the animal walked in mud and then sand filled in that impression and created a kind of a, an inverse track, which, which then the rock got turned upside down. So the tracks that you're actually seeing here are upside down. You're looking at the, the bottom of the foot print of the of the animal we haven't seen any other examples of that these are fantastic you can see the claws you can see the foot pads you have partial tracks you have complete tracks complete enough to depict some incredible details about a long extinct but still very lively type of dinosaur so we call this growlator it's a small theropod bipedal dinosaur which all of which were carnivores so these were small carnivorous dinosaurs that were lurking around the the sand dunes of southern Nevada 190 million years or so ago. Which makes it absolutely Jurassic in its time frame and behavior. We're pretty sure that these carnivorous dinosaurs probably came into the dune area of southern Nevada hunting these small squirrel-sized therapsids. And it's plain as the tracks on this rock, at least to an expert's eye, that the dinosaur was stalking its prey around an ancient watering hole. This animal I picture walking across this muddy lake bed and mud sticking to its foot. And so you can actually see the footprint that's kind of gloppy, that's not really distinctive with the toes, was an animal that was a foot that had mud stuck to it and it made an impression. It picked its foot up and the mud still stuck to the foot. And then when the sand later filled in that track, it filled in that kind of gloppy mud print. If that conjures up the image of a modern wading bird, you wouldn't be far off. Almost when you when you look at this type of dinosaur, you could almost look at say a, a great blue heron or an egret or something like that, and, and I, I, it strikes me as being something very similar in body type and, and movement. So now you can see why we went out of our way to take this extraordinary boulder back to the quarry to be reshaped for public display. We were able to take the boulder to a quarry where they cut it down into a more manageable size, and. You're able to see the strata, you're able to see the layers of the sand in the sandstone and still preserve the top of the rock. And that's inspired our staff, who are some of the most avid students of Southern Nevada's natural history, to keep looking down all over the property with the highest hopes of other discoveries, which are a regular but still amazing feature of the preserve. There is a deep history of life here in Southern Nevada, and you can go out and you can see that here at the Springs Preserve, you can see it at Red Rock, you can see it at Valley of Fire. Uh, you just have to get out and go find it.